Okay, the first point here is going to be blatantly obvious of points to deal with in this video, so let's just get it out of the way. Does it really hold up if you go over the conversations that they had? You know, Sydney and Rocky. Rocco? Rock. Does it hold up? Do, do we buy that all along he's a psycho who can't feel anything and has to live out other people's lives to get a semblance of feeling and she has this kind of she needs to feel loved and she's latched on to him you know partially because that first sexual experience the intimacy you know anyway to get to it when you think about it the first scene they were rehearsing their lines the stories you know where did the brother come from I have to get used to the my new married name and let's see there there's the scene at the store where she keeps wanting him to say I missed you and that's obviously because she actually does you know she needs him to say that he loves her And then there are the scenes where they are going over, you know, the pictures of themselves. The picture of themselves. And, you know, basically what they're actually saying isn't, surely that isn't Nick and Gina. No, it could be anyone. What they're actually saying is people wouldn't be able to identify us from that. So even if Nick and Gina have seen our photo, we don't have to worry about it. And I guess when they're saying these people are too crazy, maybe we should just make them an excuse and get out of here, they're kind of saying we can't act like these people or maybe they're too risky. I don't know. It more or less holds up, you know. I do think that it was maybe a little too drastic that suddenly we're caring about Gina and Nick, you know. Maybe especially Gina because we just have not spent that much time with her, or maybe that's just me. It seems like didn't at least half an hour of the movie pass before we even met her. So by the time she's running to save Nick, We've known her for maybe half an hour of screen time, you know? And that we suddenly have to, you know, hate and be disgusted by Cliff Rock Sand? I don't know. It's Pebbles? Bam Bam? I don't know. It's maybe just a little bit too much of a change. You know, I did kind of like the at least partial payoff to the he's really hard to kill. I mean, for most of the movie, that's like you're thinking, uh oh, he's the killer and he's really hard to kill, you know, and then it's, you know, Rock shoots him and he survives, you know. Wasn't 100% sure if it's just because he, like, hit him... I don't know, I guess the metal plate stopped and Nick forgot to check. Not very professional. He also seemed to fire a lot of bullets off at Gina. I don't know, I guess he panicked or something. I did really like that we found out that he had survived by, you know, just 
his mouth being above water in the, you know, it was kind of perfect, that whole psycho ex-soldier dude, you know, and the, I have to admit, I did chuckle a little when he's, you know, hunting goats, and, you know, he's like, come on, okay, stop. Stop! Come on! Stop! I have to make a phone call. You know, just so weird. Really, just. I mean, at some point you just realize he's just fucking with him. You know, there's not really, and and then he returns with a goat or something. He's killed some animal. You know, and it was like, you know, where did he go? And he comes back with. You know, he said he went out to hunt, then he wasn't hunting, and then, yeah. I also liked more on the Psycho Soldier thing, when he attacked, you know, both Gina and he stab Rock with a knife. Granted, Gina only had access to the Switchblade, and... Nick used Nick used the army knife, but still, what it left behind, you know, her stab, just, you know, okay, that hand is not doing completely awesome anymore, but when he stabs Rock, you know, it makes the hand come apart, and he can't hold the fucking gun properly anymore. That was just so good, and he just slowly walks up, just freaking Terminator style, you know, and just, and then he has the gun and the blade to his throat, you know, that was really good. I normally don't like sequels or spin-offs when they're really not necessary, but, I'm gonna kill myself later for saying this, but honestly, if they had to make some kind of follow-up to this movie, I wouldn't mind spending 90 minutes with Nick, especially if Oliphant portrays him again. It's one of the most fun characters I've seen him do. I liked the inclusion of the red herring couple, you know, Marla Shelton and some guy. That was pretty effective, because you have that thing where you don't quite see him properly, and he's kind of aggressive, you know, and then he busts him on two lies, you know, and you have that whole thing, and then at the end of the movie, you realize what he said as he was being dragged to the chopper was absolutely correct. We, the audience, assumed just because they dressed that certain way that they were somehow criminals, you know, f for what, you know, nothing. They hadn't done anything, you know, and I would maybe say I did kind of figure that it was a frame-up, you know, because we had seen him go near the bag of that guy, you know, and he... It was a little obvious that it was Rock who had put the... But with that said, it still didn't completely dawn on me that they were the killers before... I mean, the movie played me like a puppet or a musical instrument that it was a virtuosa, it really worked.